Okay, so this paper is about uh, demand forecasting uh, for a particular text calling company. <clears throat> this is a joint work uh, between Beihan, Hong Kong, Didi. Uh, so the first author, Yongxin, cannot make the trip, so I will try to convey the main ideas behind this paper. So as I mentioned, the uh, main task here is to predict uh, original taxi demand. And I think original may not be uh, the perfect name, but I will try to explain what, what do I mean original, okay, uh, tax demand. So here's the, uh, the problem we have. We have uh, this, uh, let's say, particular region, in this case in Beijing, Haidian region. Uh, we know the number of demands, let's say from five to six, six to seven, seven to eight, eight to nine, nine to 10. Then we try to predict uh, uh, the future demands. Uh, in one hour, in two hours, in three hours, it's actual, okay? And we also have uh, uh, historical information, let's say last uh, one year, for example, or last many years. And here, the, the, here's the definition, the, the original tax demand uh, means the number of the tax calling orders submitted to the online taxi cab platform, okay? Uh, per unit time and per unit region. And here, a uh, platform can be like a uh, Uber, Didi, Lyft, for example, okay? Here the time can also uh, can vary, can be one hour, uh, you try to predict demand in one hour, in half an hour, or in one day, for example, okay? Or in a few hours, okay? So original here means the, uh, uh, the true demand, right? Which actually submit to the platform. And here I give an example. So in the first case, let's say a, a pregnant woman want to go to hospital. Right? It's a raining day. Uh, so she really needs to take a taxi. Uh, even if, if she needs to take a long time, right? take a long time for her to get a taxi, she will wait. Right? Uh, so here, this is an example where the woman will call for a taxi, submit he, her application, her request, and the trip, and she will get responded, basically. And the trip will be completed. Okay? So this is one case. And it's good, and there's uh, uh, the demand, and there's, uh, it's completed. In the second case, uh, this is for, for a man. Uh, he, let's say, go to his office, raining day, he, you know, he want to take a taxi. Uh, but since it's a raining day, it, it, takes, it sometimes takes a long time to uh, get a taxi. So then he decides just to cancel, cancel his uh, request. Uh, and then maybe he will take a bus, or he will just take uh, another option, okay? So this will not be shown in the, in the, in the for example, uh, if you do, a, let's say DD, right? Uh, we have, we have a track, we have a record of the number of trip completed. And this will not include these cases, okay? So in this paper, we we'll focus on the number of text calling orders submitted. Some of them may be completed, some of them may not be completed. So applications, uh, this has a huge application actually. Uh, for, ex for example, DD organized uh, its uh, first major competition last uh, summer. Uh, and the major task there is to predict supply and demand, uh, let's say in half an hour or in one hour. And the winner actually got uh, 100,000 US dollars for, for, their, for their top performance, performing algorithm. So if we know the true demand, then we can have a good planning for our service, regular car or carpooling, okay? And the second one is, <clears throat> if we know the true demand uh, in, let's say, in half an hour, and we need, uh, let's say, 100 more drivers uh, in a particular region, maybe there's a certain event happens, and we know there will be, we need a lot of more drivers, okay? Like in this case, in KDD conference. So we know we need a, a lot of more drivers in the airport. Uh, in this case now, what we can do is we can send more drivers to this area. Of course, the driver will, in many cases, may not uh, follow your instruction. So we have to give the incentive, certain incentive, okay? So the key here is to predict uh, the demand, true demand, and then try to design a um, good incentive mechanism to try to attract driver to this particular region at a particular time point. So here, time, space, spatial, temporal are both very important, okay? And the last one is uh, uh, dispatch. 
So when you dispatch means you match driver with the passengers, okay? Uh, typically, you try to ma ma minimize distance between the pair, between these two, driver and passenger. But if you know, if you know the, true, the demand in the future, you can make use of such information to <clears throat> improve your dispatch. So for example, uh, there are two, two passengers. One, <clears throat> uh, a, a passenger go towards a destination, uh, and we know there's high demand. Let's say in half an hour, uh, travel from A to, for A to his, desti his destination, and there's a high demand for drivers uh, in, in the destination. Or well, for driver B, for passenger B, uh, in his or her destination, it's uh, uh, much less demand in half an hour. So if you know the future demand, uh, then you should send the driver, you should match driver with passenger A to go to a region where uh, there's a much higher demand for drivers. And here is uh, just show you a, uh, uh, it's just one, I think, uh, time slice of Beijing. And for each region, we give a number. And this is the number, this number indicates how many more drivers we need, right? Uh, this red means, this red 10 means this region we need 10 more drivers. Maybe there are 16 passengers looking for a ride, and there's only six drivers. We need 10 more. Well, for the green ones, we actually have, we have more drivers than we need. That's negative uh, 18 means we have 18 more drivers than needed. So, but this is real-time information. So if you show this to the driver uh, for green region and send this driver to the red region, and this may not work because it may take some time to travel. The traffic is typically bad for red areas. And once they actually arrive in red area, this red may become green. Right? So it's quite over, quite dynamic. In this case, we have to do a, a forecasting. We need to know the demand, supply, red, uh, green, in advance. Let's say in half an hour. So we do a much better planning. Okay. There are two, uh, we propose a very simple approach. It's an important problem, but we try a very simple approach. Uh, one is complex models, simple models. So there are two ways, right? So either use a very few features in left side, very few features, but you try very complex nonlinear model, such as deep learning, uh, or we try very simple model, such as linear regression, uh, random forest, or uh, boosting tree, uh, but you, you do a, a very comprehensive feature engineering. You extract a huge number of features, okay? But very simple model. We try both approach, I think they are uh, comparable, actually, in, in the end, quite comparable. But the key will be, the key focus is different. It's, you, first approach, you spend a lot of efforts on uh, this model, modeling part. Well, the second part is you try to ex do a feature engineer. Okay? And in this paper, we focus on the second approach. So by the way, both approaches will give you a similar result. Right? And so what the, the key idea here is feature engineering, you get a, a lot of base features and you try to find more complex features, like for example, inter feature interactions, feature combinations. So we use uh, four types of base features. First one is temporal features. Uh, for example, you use the uh, demand in the last one hour for this particular region. That's temporal. And you can also use the historical information. For example, uh, last week, the same time point, the demand may be similar, should be similar even last month, last year, right? So we can use the information from the history along similar time point, the same region. Spatial features, you can use the uh, demand in nearby areas as a features. Weather condition make a difference. When, typically when it rains, there's, the demand will increase dramatically, right? And when certain event happens, then there's also a, a, a dramatic increase in for a certain region. So here, temporal features is months, months, day of months, day of week, hour of day, holiday, so the time, okay? And the historical demands, last hour, uh, last week, last month, last year. The spatial features, it's like uh, which area, district, POI uh, in this area, and the category of POI. It's an uh, it's, uh, airport or it's a uh, uh, restaurant, it's actually, okay? And weather conditions, uh, temperature, mind, humidity, air quality. These all make a big difference. 
So for example, you want it rains, then it's less likely you will uh, ride the bicycle uh, as the last, last paper, last presentation, right? And when air quality is very bad, like sometimes in Beijing this happens, then it's less likely pe uh, people will, draw, will ride a bicycle. Okay? So this will have, have a huge impact on the demand. And last was event. When certain event happens, then that will make a, a huge difference. So now we do a feature combination, but we do not do random, uh, random combination. Right? First one is a temporal, temporal combination. And this, this, uh, this histogram shows why temporal, temporal is actually important. So we have three lines. The blue line shows the, uh, the distribution of normalized hourly taxi demand, hourly demand, a histogram, during weekdays, Monday to Friday. This is uh, this blue line. Uh, you do see these two peak uh, rush hours, morning, afternoon rush hours. Clear these, uh, these two peaks. Then the, the yellow line, the orange line in the bottom, uh, this, is the, this is the demand for the weekend days, Saturday, Sunday. And you do see this, uh, uh, it's, the, the peak is not very really, uh, strong as the, as the weekdays. At least only one peak, it's the afternoon peak. Right? So you do see the difference between uh, weekdays, weekend days, and between the hours. It's in the morning, afternoon. So, so you can see the demand is influenced by the day of the week and also hour of day jointly. So by, by combining these two, uh, you will actually detect such, such difference. Second of all, temporal of spatial. Here I give two examples, two, uh, two lines. And it's a text demand for hourly text demand. The, 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 the X axis is these 24 hours, and at least the orange line is the uh, residence areas where people live, okay? And then the blue ones are the, that's the infrastructure, people doing infrastructure. And uh, as expected, in the morning, uh, more people, uh, people will leave home to go to work, right? So you will see uh, more demand for the uh, residence area in the morning. And in the afternoon, then people return back home, right? So it's, it's, you, you do see the, this uh, difference, the, the interaction between Temporal spatial information. So you can see the, the demand is influenced by type of a POI, where you are, and the hour of the day. So it's temporal spatial interaction. Last one is the weather spatial. This one's also interesting. Here's two examples. Uh, this blue line are the on raining days, the demand, hourly demand, and not, not raining days on for, for the orange ones. And left is the Entertainment reach area, and right one, right figure is airport. Okay, so imagine we, when you are in airport, you try to uh, travel back home. I uh, think uh, whether you taxi or not, taxi or not uh, is independent of weather. So it's rain, you may take a taxi. It does not rain, you still take a taxi. You will not take a bicycle back home from airport, like less likely, right? For example, so you don't see a he clear huge difference. Uh, when you are in an airport. But in the left side, in the entertainment, let's say you watch a, a film, for example, you go back home. Then there's a difference. When it's raining days, let's say in the, uh, 7 p.m., you go back home now, then uh, it's more likely you will take a taxi uh, when it rains for blue light. And for orange lines, it's less likely. So you do see the clear difference right, in terms of the time, day, and location where you are. So where you are makes a huge difference. And this, so different weather condition have a different influence on uh, different locations where you are. And so we want to, to uh, consider the interaction between time and, uh, and the weather condition. So, so that's what we do. We combine, we collect all these features, temporal, spatial, weather, event, and we do our combinations, and we get a huge number of features. And then we use very simple model, linear regulation, plus some regulators that we'll talk about in a moment. It's simple, uh, it works well. So here is a list of all of the features we will use in, in the model. The, for the base feature, we have all of the temporal, spatial, uh, weather condition event, and then we do all of the combinations, as I mentioned, and eventually we get uh, 200 million features, dimensions, okay? 
and follow, now follow, let's follow feature engineering. Uh, so the reason we, we spend a lot of efforts on feature engineering is what actually what we found out from last year competition uh, is the feature engineering is actually more, actually more important than the model design, actually, in many cases. Right? So to get as many as, uh, as many as possible, as many good features as possible, as least critical, more important. Uh, then you get a much better model. In many cases, model, uh, different models, they perform very similarly, okay? So we use a very simple model, linear regression, plus uh, this called elastic net regulator. It's one on plus two norm of the model. And here, yi is the, uh, is the response, and the pi is a linear model. But of course, this is not good enough, right? So then you add the regulator, spatial temporal regulator, and this is very easy. So basically, if the two, uh, two samples, they are close to each other in terms of the spatial temporal domain. Let's say if two regions, they are next to each other, and the, the time also similar, similar time points, then their prediction should be close to each other, okay? So this is more like a Laplace regulator uh, to constrain your prediction. And this does make a, a big difference for the, for the modeling part. Okay. Then we apply the model to uh, two big data sets. Uh, one data set, but two cities in China. One is Beijing, the other one is Hangzhou. The number of the, rec uh, the number of the trip, a trip, or the number of the demands, because the demands may not eventually lead to trip. Some of the demands uh, will not be completed. Right? It's about in Beijing, it's about 23 million trip, and for Hangzhou, it's about 12 million trip. And in terms of POI. 12 million for Beijing and 9.8 million for, for Hangzhou. In both cases, we use 75% for training and 25% uh, for testing. And here's one, uh, here's a result. So the HA here is means the uh, naive simple approach. You used simple mean following, following your history and it does not perform well as expected. So simple, simple historical mean perform poorly on both data sets. And then we apply a uh, well-known approach from uh, time series domain. Is this uh, a RIMA and a Markov, Markov model? They do not perform very well. Sometimes even worse than the naive simple mean. So the major reason is they consider spatial inf temporal information, but they do not consider spatial information. And the temp spatial uh, is also critical in this case, in the prediction, okay? Well, for, uh, for nearest neighbor and for, for neural network and for uh, gradient boosting, so GBRT is great, gradient boosting regression tree, these two are quite competitive. Because they, 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 these are nonlinear approach and they extract spatial temporal features from our data. They perform quite well. But the best approach are the last two, HP, MSI, and our proposed approach. So they make uh, use of both spatial temporal much better than other approaches. Okay. And our approach performs the best. So here, uh, here are the top features uh, from our experiment. Rank one to 10, and they are mutual information. You can see among the top 10, top eight are uh, interaction features. These two features, uh, interaction combination. And the top ones actually is a combination of three type of features, temporal, spatial, weather condition, okay? And this shows the importance of uh, feature engineering, com combining features from multiple domains, cross domain features. Okay, uh, so in this paper we propose a very simple approach, linear regression plus spatial temporal regularization. It's essentially La Laplace regularization. And we, uh, most of our efforts focus on feature engineering. We get spatial temporal weather event based features and then we do a feature combination. We get about 200 million features. And we show this simple model perform uh, as well as uh, other models. We also compare with deep learning models and they perform similarly. 
and we apply these, these uh, tools, these algorithms to large scale data set from Beijing and Hanzhou. Uh, we collect from DD platform and they perform quite well. Okay? And then the, the next part is about the application, how we can make use of the prediction for incentive design for repositioning for dispatch. Yeah, thank you. <laughs>